explain it. But in a worldview where God doesn't exist, then me pain is meaningless. Okay. So you're just out of luck. Sucks to be you. So if something bad happens to you, it doesn't mean anything. Uh, you're just not lucky that it didn't happen to somebody else. But in a worldview where, uh, what's it called, that God exists, then your suffering has meaning. Your suffering is part of a test. Your suffering, see, I'm a Muslim. We believe that life is a test and that when you go through suffering, God is testing you and you're getting, you're, for every bit that you suffer, you're getting good deeds because you're being patient. See, patience has no value if God doesn't exist, right? Because it's better to just get rid of the suffering. But sometimes you can't. What if you get sick and it's a terminal illness? There's no cure. You know, what do you do? It's meaningless. It is. Yeah. So you're right. I agree with you guys that with God in the picture, just easier. things make, yeah, it's, I wouldn't say just easier. It's pragmatic. So what do I mean by that? There's the use, there's a, it's a useful, useful belief to have. Um, and it explains more about our world. So I'd say it's a more comprehensive explanation. You know what I mean? And there's, like you said, there's a lot of religions. So I think we all agree, like belief in God is a good thing and we all believe in God. So, so why exactly are you Christian specifically and like not something else? Uh, Mom, you could join as well. Hello. How are you? We're, we just agreed about... My English is not good. No, don't worry. People come from everywhere. See, my English maybe compared to UK is not very good because I'm not from uh, the UK. I'm Canadian. Yeah, so you guys are from Poland, I'm Canadian. It's a worldwide place. Yeah, people from everywhere come. You speak very good English. Yeah, I think you're not being uh, generous to yourself. So we just agreed that it's good to believe in God because it makes more sense. It explains the world better. And a good example is, is when people go through tough times, struggle, suffering. That suffering makes sense if God is testing you and is giving you good deeds for you being patient. You know what I mean? But if, but if God doesn't exist, then your suffering means nothing. It's just meaningless. It's you're just not lucky. This other person didn't get ill, but you got ill. And if you die, too bad, so sad. That's it's, it's another good thing to, to think about. But so I was asking them. The next question is, um, what makes them want to be Christian? Because now that we agree that God exists and it's a good thing to believe in God, a lot of religions believe in God. So what was the thing that made them, or what made you? Because you're Christian as well, Catholic, um, from what I understand. What made Catholicism? Uh, true to you guys? Uh, very difficult for me. I, I, I don't know what, what, what to say. No, it's all right. I, please feel free, any of you, like whatever you guys think. There's, I'm just trying to understand your worldview better. Yeah. Uh -huh. let, let me just think. You could translate for your mom if you want, there's no yeah, problem. Yeah. <laughs> Your, your question is very hard, I think. Uh, mm. But it's a good question to think about, right? It is. It is. Uh, why, why Catholicism? Mm. Because, you know, we can't just, you know, go with the religion that we're born in, right? Because the, somebody... Uh, she thinks that a man uh, mm -hmm. needs some something to believe, mm -hmm. uh, something uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, higher than himself. Uh, higher than himself. Yes. I agree. Something uh, mm -hmm. not physical. Something I agree with you. That's I, you know what's so interesting about that. I completely agree with you. They've done Oxford University. You know Oxford University in, in Oxford. They've done. A very big, big, big study. Justin Barrett is a famous academic. He led it. And they said, the conclusion was, they took children from atheistic background. So atheistic mean they don't believe in God. Their families don't believe in God in generally atheistic countries. And they, they studied these children. And what they found is, these children had a natural inclination or a natural belief from when they were tiny. Nobody taught them this. But they always recognize something that was not physical, greater than them. Because it's so natural in us as human beings, we need this. Yeah. It's like a human being, we can't just, the material is not enough. Yeah. Because our soul, it needs um, it food. Needs it needs food, it needs nourishment. Yeah. And the soul is not nourished by material things. It needs something greater. So I, we're completely on the same page. Yeah. Completely, I agree with you. So now my next question would be, you see, I'm a Muslim, you guys are Christian. So my question is, 
uh, how do we decide, how do we know what religion to follow or why do you guys or why are you guys Christian because we agree about all this we agree that, about God we agree that we we all should um, believe in a higher creator so what makes your family or what makes you Christian or why did you choose Christianity dlaczego wybraliśmy chrześcijaństwo bo jest muzułmanem i Cultural, I know that. Direct, yeah. connected with our culture. In yes. Poland, this is the main religion. It is the main religion, yes. Yeah, and we are just mm. raised as, as mm. uh, Christians. Mm. So, can I ask you something? So, if if you and your children, if you guys were born in India, probably we would you would be Hindus, yeah. right? No, probably, I think so. Yeah. 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 Yes. But, is there a problem there? Nieważne, czy jest tak, wszędzie jest jeden Bóg, tylko każdy nazywa go inaczej po swojemu. Ale to jest wszystko i tak jeden Bóg. Każdy go nazywa po swojemu. She thinks that there is there is a one God in general, but people around the world call call him different things. Yeah, I mean, you know, the Islamic perspective is very similar. See, in Islam, we believe that. A lot. By the way, I want to tell you this. I don't know if you know, but you know, a, a Bible in Arabic it has Allah. So Allah is not a new. It's the same uh, God that of Abraham, same God of Moses, same. If you open an Arabic Bible, it says Allah in the Old Testament. No, uh, no, no problems. Sorry, not in the Old Testament in the, in the Bible uh, as a whole. But the, the point is, is that uh, we'd say in the Islamic perspective in the Quran, Allah says that He sent a messenger to every nation. So He say, yeah, like. Uh, many people, uh, many different people, languages, ethnicities, nations, tribes, they all got messengers. They all got prophets. Yeah, we, we believe in Jesus as a Messiah as well as Muslims. So these messengers, they came with God's revelation and they were telling the people to believe in God, one God. So we, we'd agree there. But what I'd also tell you is what would happen a lot of times is that when the message, messenger would come with the message from God, he would tell his disciples, his companions, his friends, you know, the people he was teaching. Okay. And what would happen is after his death, when he would pass away, the message gets changed. And then what would happen? See, if you look at Hinduism, originally, it's one God. Then afterwards, many. If you look at in, in, um, in if Greek mythology or Roman mythology, it's always one big God. Then later, many after. So what happens is people, because they love to anthropomorphize. They like, they like to make everything like humans. So they make God like a human. God has a wife. God has children. Demigods have children. Have, so they make the religion that God gave the prophet completely different. And then it becomes misguidance. So do you, do you, are you following what I'm saying? So yeah. people become, they follow wrong things then. They don't follow what the prophet said. I will I'm just in a conversation. I want to ask you a question before I go. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I have conversation brother. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, just, the just watch out the camera for, for the block. Mm. No, you can tell me what she said. She says that everything equals in one one God. Like I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, the messages, all of them, come from one God. Yes, from the say yes, they all come from one God. But the problem is, what happens with the messages after is they get changed. And then people start thinking three gods. Uh -huh. People start thinking this prophet is now a god. Uh -huh. This messenger is now a god. See, in Islam, we believe God. Mm. 
którą? Człowiek wymyślił. To, 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 to co pan mówił, że się nie kształca after, after tej śmierci, nie? Co bym chciał Po prostu, ale to pomijamy to i tak mm. to jest. Nad żadnym mm. jest jeden Bóg. You could honestly translate, don't worry. Yeah. No, yeah. I will not be offended. I, I know, I, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to find the word. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Okay, so, uh, she, uh, she says that um, every, uh, the, this information changes uh, because... Uh, change nie because, trzeba na to zwracać uh, uwagi, na to, co się mm. dzieje. Because, uh, because of, of people, because of people uh, mm. created... I, I agree with you, I agree with you. Uh, but do you see... The seem... important thing is that... Uh, mm. The, it all com, comes to the mm. wrong goal. But do you see why there's a problem? I, I'm asking you. Uh, do I see? Yes, I see. Yeah, you see, right? I see too. Yeah, you see I too see good. The, yeah, because because if people change, changes. yeah, if pe yeah, people make a lot of changes, then you're not following anymore what God says. You're following what people say. And if you look at the changes, it's the changes are not one God anymore. The changes are. Oh yeah, yeah. Whenever you feel that, yeah, but I, I just want to quickly. Uh, before you guys leave, I want to tell you really what the Islamic message is. Okay. Um, we believe in one God, as you guys said. And we believe in prior messages that came. Jesus as a Messiah, uh, the Prophet Moses with the Torah. And we believe in all the, the, all the messengers before, all the way up to Adam. But what we believe is, is that, as you said correctly, people change these messages. And when the messages are changed, God sends a new messenger with a new message. So when we, when we look at, um, for example, if I was born in the time of Jesus, I would be a follower of Jesus. The problem is, since the time of Jesus, Jesus always said uh, what, uh, to worship the Father. In the Lord's Prayer, our Father be, uh, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So he doesn't say our Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? He says our Father. And then he says in John 17, 3, uh, the only true God is the Father. And Jesus, when he's praying, he's always praying to the Father. So he's always pointing to the Father, correct? Yeah, so he always says, he's like, the Father is greater than I. Yeah, so when he's saying to Mary Magdalene, he's like, uh, what, what's it called? I go now to my Father and your Father. My God and your God. So he's always saying, only worship one God, one God. But what would happen after is if we read uh, church history, yeah, church history, if you read it, what happened is after Jesus' death, there was this 400 year period, 400 years, where you had, um, uh, what's it called, uh, the Christian thinkers and people from Hellenic backgrounds, like Greek backgrounds as well, yeah. come in and introduce their ideas. So what would happen was, you ended up with this idea by um, a church uh, person named Tertullian, he coined Trinity. And then later in fourth century, to 300 something years after, Jesus' death, peace be upon him, he, uh, they, this trinity came. But if you look at the early Christians, they didn't have the concept of trinity. So what we would say as Muslims is, is that the message of Jesus was changed over time. And when, when God saw that this message was, was being changed, God sent another messenger. And Jesus talks about this in the Bible, that there will be a comforter that comes after, after him. And the Jews as well, they were waiting somebody to come. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he got revelation to be, uh, to correct the, um, what's it called, the changes that happened afterwards. So yeah, do you wanna, do you wanna comment? Yeah, you have to go, yes, uh, uh, that's it. So all I would say is, do you mind if I give you guys uh, a free, free Quran, if that's okay, if you guys ever want to read it, uh, free, free of charge, you guys could read it. I'll give it to you and you guys could go, uh, go as well. Up to you guys. A free Quran. If you want, uh, well, maybe some things about Jesus. Yeah, of course, yes, in English. It's not in Arabic, don't worry. Just give me one second. I'll go to the... If you guys want to even follow me. No, but bring also the Jesus material as well. Just, you, could, you guys could follow me just over there and you guys could then go as well if you'd like. Please follow me. Yeah. Catholics because they were born in a Catholic country. But that's not a good thing, you know. The Quran criticizes this. We shouldn't follow the religion of our forefathers blindly. Now, alhamdulillah, they're very humble and open-minded people. And inshallah, they do their own due diligence and they, they look more into Islam. But subhanAllah, their, a lot of their beliefs, it seems, are aligned with the fitrah. They have not yet been corrupted by the teachings of the church. So Alhamdulillah for that. And inshallah, they, they, they carry on uh, uh, what they're doing. And uh, Jazakallah khairan uh, for watching. And I just want to actually make a final note. You know, sometimes du'at will have a different approach to different people. 
And that's, that's on purpose, it's by design. Sometimes you might see me and I'm being a bit tough or I'm being loud. And that's for a reason, guys. There's a reason behind this. Sometimes things happen behind the cameras or before the cameras start rolling. Sometimes I might see somebody who is disingenuously or arrogantly being rude to some Muslim brothers and he might need some, some the, 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 the stick approach, the tough approach. And he might need a more firm approach to take that arrogance away from him, to, to knock him off his pedestal. But I, to be clear, this is not the preferred method to approach the da'wah. But sometimes it's necessary because if you don't do this, then they will carry on with their arrogance and they will do it so confidently that it may deceive people who believe to see confidence as a sign of intelligence or a sign of knowledge. So the general status or the, uh, the method that we should uh, the, uh, usually go by is softness, leading with wisdom as always and kindness and compassion, giving the benefit of the doubt. But what happens is when somebody gives you ample evidence that they're being disingenuous, arrogant, rude, then you have to change the approach. You have to be dynamic and you have to, um, what's it called? Give every person their just treatment. So this is why sometimes you might think, why is Brother Ismail being tough with this brother? It's the reason behind it. Because maybe before the camera started rolling, this brother was being rude or arrogant to some of the Muslim brothers and he needed a firm approach. However, the best approach, alhamdulillah, is when you have a cordial, nice conversation with an open-minded family like this Polish family. And anyways, I think I want to end it there. Jazakallah khairan. And jazakallah, yeah, jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.